It's a known fact that cybersecurity is one of the most in-demand skills in the today's IT industry and cybersecurity as a skill or as a domain is set to have an exponential growth in the next decade, in the coming decade. Everyone including me wants to know more, learn more about it and that's the reason why I have made this video. Today we'll understand the basic concepts of cybersecurity, the pillar, CIA triad pillar on which cybersecurity stand and then we'll understand some common cybersecurity threats or cyber attacks which we face day in and day out. If I'll get enough likes on this video, I would understand that I could continue this series further wherein I could add uh, videos on the career roadmap, how to progress into cybersecurity or how to enter into cybersecurity and also some common certifications which are needed in the industry. So without further ado, let's get on with our understanding of the basics of cybersecurity. So friends, even before starting with cybersecurity, let me share a real life security incident. It happened in my childhood. Uh, it was, I think, uh, summer, it was June month, I guess, and we were all sleeping together. And we were, um, I think, for, for, for the last few days, there was something weird happening. One thing which my father was noticing that, uh, that there was some money missing from his pocket or something. And we were suspicious of something, but we said, okay, no one is coming in and all that, how, how a theft could happen. But strangely, one day we found that there was a guy who used to come around 4 a.m., 5 a.m. in the morning and used to put a stick with a, with a hook in between. Uh, it was a customized stick and used to put it inside uh, through, the, you know, through the window which was on the roadside of our, of our house and take the pant which was hanging near to uh, the door take it, take the money from the pant or shirt wherever the money was in and then put it back. So uh, we, we, we never felt as if something is happening, uh, something wrong is happening. But one day we saw that stick coming uh, from the window and trying to uh, pull the clothes uh, through the window so that he can pull the money out of it. And that, that was the time we caught him, but he ran away. But that was the security incident in, in my life, which I saw alive. I was very young, but one thing was very clear that the thief was very clever because he targeted houses in summer because in those days during summer you you, you, you didn't had acs and all so the windows used to be uh, open the fan was always on the high speed so that the sound of the fan used to uh, you know used to aid uh, his theft and uh, eventually he used to do this uh, without letting anybody know that there's something uh, fishy going on here but after this incident we took some measures you know we we always uh, lock the windows from inside and the doors and everything and that's about it. I think that security incident uh, taught us a lot of lessons. Uh, so guys, let's define cybersecurity. Cybersecurity is set of tools, techniques or framework which helps us protect our network, our computers, our software, our servers, whatever we use in the world of IT, the way we protect it is what is cybersecurity and the three building blocks or three pillars of cybersecurity are confidentiality integrity and availability now to understand these three it's very important to take a real life example when we talk about confidentiality it's, it's about having uh, authorized access of information to only people which have the right access and the privilege to use that information so that makes anything confidential uh, for example, when you go to uh, your ATM machine, you enter your card and then you enter your PIN code that proves that you are the intended person who need to get money out of that ATM machine. That is kind of a confidentiality which is maintained. The second is integrity. Integrity means that the person who is authorized, who is the right authorized party can make the changes or can utilize the information within the system. If we again take ATM as an example, if you are withdrawing money or transferring money or anything, your bank statements would have your name uh, there. Um, and it is very clearly shown that you are the person who's doing these transactions so that the integrity of your account is maintained. And there is no spoofing or no uh, unauthorized person getting in and, uh, you know, tinkering with uh, your own uh, money and the last one is availability which means that your system should be robust enough and scalable enough to be available all the time 
to provide you the service in case of atms you now see atms uh, pretty much everywhere uh, in your um, you know in your locality that means that even if the bank is closed you can still withdraw money so anywhere wherever you go and uh, apply cyber security principle you would always build the framework on these three core principles confidentiality integrity and availability so friends now as we have some basic fundamental understanding of what is cyber security let's understand some common types of cyber attacks which happens and uh, which cyber security protects us from so friends before we move to the cyber threats uh, let's understand another important uh, fundamental around cyber security which is about risk analysis so any security you know security risk how you evaluate that so basically it's evaluated based on threat multiplied by vulnerability now how to understand it so threat is a potential risk or a potential threat which could impact or which could uh, you know hack your system or which could attack your system that is a threat and vulnerability is a weakness in your system uh, which that particular threat could exploit to understand in a real life uh, real life uh, context suppose uh, the threat could be covid okay so uh, catching a covid uh, uh, infection is a threat and if you are diabetic or if you are an aged person you are more vulnerable so overall if you see these threat into vulnerability it implies the kind of risk you have so the bigger the threat and the bigger the vulnerability the bigger the risk is so that is where the risk uh, you know risk stands so you have to always assess the risk based on what kind of threat it is and what kind of vulnerability it is and that's why it's not always possible to ir uh, ir remove the threat but what you can do is you can harden your images you can make your network more secure so that you are less vulnerable so that's where you reduce the risk of any security threat so this was an important concept now let's understand what kind of cyber uh, security threats or cyber attacks we face uh, in real life so i have taken a standard information flow which happens day in and day out wherein we uh, access something on the internet through our laptop and maybe access some application server and the database server so i have taken this flow and i will explain some five uh, common cyber attacks which could happen in this whole uh, chain of uh, information exchange but before that we have to understand that any attack goes through this cyber kill chain process wherein uh, you know any um, hacker would survey your system or your entire network to understand where uh, the vulnerability is where it could deliver some sort of an infection or a threat or a bug and once that is done uh, it tries to breach the security uh, firewalls for example of your network or it would try to infect or do something you breaching the security boundaries of your system once the defect has been delivered or the bug has been delivered into your network and eventually it will affect your entire system so these four steps will always be followed in any kind of cyber attack so malware and phishing are the first two uh, cyber attack types wherein uh, a malware is kind of an, a virus which could uh, infect your system it generally comes through an email uh, with an attachment you download that attachment and we try to open it uh, it spreads into your laptop so malware is generally infected by that and that's why you have your antivirus installed and it pops you and gives you an alert if it feels that there is uh, something not right about a certain email and the attachment it's, uh, it carries so the whole idea is to infect your laptop and take control of certain activities which your laptop does using that particular virus so this is uh, uh, called as malware Phishing is kind of uh, attached to malware because in order to install malware into your system uh, the hacker has to pretend as if it is a legitimate thing or a legitimate application or a leg legitimate attachment and that's where phishing happens so in phishing you will generally get emails uh, uh, quoting as if uh, for example happy birthday it is your birthday and this is uh, a gift from us kindly open it and see what we have got for you now that is phishing because you are pretending to be someone else and trying and enticing the user to go and try to click the, on that particular malware which has been sent through that attachment so phishing is 
uh, a way of hiding your identity and trying to fool or trying to catch a particular user into the trap. So these two are the most common ones. The third one is man in the middle, which is called as MITM, man in the middle attack. Man in the middle attack is a very uh, common thing wherein if a system is sending some information for uh, suppose for example in this case to the DNS server, uh, you know an attacker might be sitting here uh, intercepting that particular communication between uh, this machine and this machine and in between it would try to hack this particular communication and pretend as if this is the legitimate source with which the DNS server has to connect to. So it might happen that it comes in the middle and then all the information which is coming from here starts coming to this particular system or this particular attacker and then this uh, particular attacker starts sending that information in a convoluted manner to this particular user who's sitting somewhere here. It could happen that uh, you are sending uh, a request to a website and the DNS server is about to get send you the legitimate website but in between this attacker changes that particular uh, IP address for that particular uh, domain name and routes you to uh, his or her own website. So those kind of things comes under man in the middle attack. The fourth category of uh, attack is also very important which is DOS, denial of service or DDoS which is the advanced version of uh, attacks which is called as distributed denial of service in which there uh, you know the attacker with the help of a lot of botnets, botnets are different computers across the world so suppose the attacker uh, he will instruct these bots to target a specific server with so many requests. So suppose if uh, you know if the attacker wants to target this particular web server, it would flood this particular server with so many requests that eventually uh, it will bring down the service of this particular web server. This is called as denial of service or distributed denial of service. Uh, one such is HTTP flood wherein you send so many HTTP requests to the web server that it you know it is uh, unable to cater to that so this happens a lot during cyber wars between two countries wherein one country would intentionally tries to bring down some important applications of the you know of the enemy country the fifth one is called as sql injection so in sql injection attacker tries to modify the sql query which is going to the backend database so for example uh, suppose there is an hr application where you log in and get your personal information from there is an employee ID which you enter in the front end login screen which actually gets appended in the where clause of the SQL query. For example, select all from employee table where employee code is 123 which is that particular employee's code. So the attacker might in way when this query is trying to go to the database might try to infect this query and modify it in a way wherein uh, it, it gets records of all the employees instead of that specific employee. So the query could be select all from employee table where employee ID is equals to 123 or 1 equals to 1. Now in this particular query, this query will always come to true because you have infected the query with an OR clause. And in that case, you might get every, you know, every employee detail. This is just an example. So you can understand how it works. SQL injection tries to infect your backend database and tries to get information out of it. So these five cyber attacks are the most common ones. There are variations of these cyber attacks, different types of these cyber attacks. For example, for malware, there is a, a type called as ransomware, wherein you take ransom for certain uh, systems. For example, once uh, you know a, a, an attacker logged my whole laptop and then demanded money from me to in order to unlock it but then eventually I, I reported it and I got it resolved but those kind of attacks uh, you know are variations of these major categories if you want me I can make a detailed video on all kinds of different cyber attacks there are almost more than 20 types which uh, you know which we can discuss uh, in some other video so friends this brings us to the end of this video I hope you learned something about cyber security from it we started from understanding security from my personal life incident then we understood what is cyber security security by definition and what is CIA triad the pillar the three pillars of cyber security and then we understood five most common types of 
cyber attacks which we face uh, in our daily lives. I hope you learned something about cyber security. If you did, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you exactly know when I upload my next video. And until next time, guys, as I always say, keep learning, keep sharing all your knowledge. And yes, keep hustling. Bye for now.